justifiable. After the roaring summer of 2014, of angry youth protests that shook over 200 cities on the issue of cop violence and impunity in the use of state violence, it's worth our while to look this situation in its face. The cops do what cops do because a machinery of protection and whitewashing exists around them. From politicians to politician-controlled grand juries, which do the whitewash and cover-up work. We all know the case of Fred Hampton, the eloquent, brilliant young leader of the Black Panthers in Chicago, shot in bed, in the head, after having been drugged by his own man, a rat for the feds. Did you know a Chicago grand jury labeled his murder justifiable homicide? In other words, killing a sleeping man is cool? I may have known it when I was a teenager. I may have forgotten it. But reading a few days ago the book Up Against the Wall, Violence in the Making and Unmaking of the Black Panther Party by scholar Curtis J. Austin reminded me justifiable homicide. Justifiable homicide. Think of that when you think of Mike Brown, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, or even yourself. But think about it today. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Record. Okay, record. Oh, yeah. Black sun in the hizzle. Oh, the shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today. But first, I want to say the views and opinions and that of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast, its staff, or Stooley, or affiliates. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that of the arena. We are a council. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that of Black Sun. God damn because I'm a goddamn Christian. God is white. Jesus is white. Everybody's white. White power. No, I'm sorry. Let me stop. Everything going to be all right. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I got to hike down. I got to hike down today. Y'all got to excuse me. I'll get on this time. Right, to my right, Kevin, let introduce yourself. I'm Kevin Karen. Uh, been on the show a couple times. Talk about Ukraine, a couple mm-hmm. other issues with the Georgia Peace and Justice Coalition. Yes, sir. And uh, excited to be here and talk yet again about yes. the situation in Ukraine and the recent assassination. Oh, man. Woo! To your rank. <laughs> Introduce yourself. I am Gary Spotterwolf, Native American freedom fighter, fighting for our independence against. Christian terrorism. Wait, wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> wait a minute. Hey, hey, you, got, you, <laughs> you don't love this good old country of ours? Hey. We didn't have Christianity since 1492. Where y'all coming oh, from? Exactly. <laughs> it's in his right. <laughs> hey, y'all know me. Made it here by the grace of God. Uh, entertainer, <laughs> activist, Vincent Cheeks. You know what time it is. I'm honored to have my man Kevin in the house. I'm even more honored to have an actual Native American here. I thought it was extinct. Mm. So it's good to see you, bro. Mm. Mm. <laughs> to my right, you know who it is. What's up, man? Brother Yanga. I share the sentiments of Brother Vincent. It's good to, you know, be here, be again with Kevin. Good to have you on the show again. Brother Spotty Wolf, which is a real pleasure because I love the fact that Brother Spotty Wolf because it speaks to the crimes of this uh, country crimes against humanity, not just our Native American brothers, but also the Africans here in, in, in this country, Mr. White Son. Well, so it's good. Let me tell you, <laughs> Mr. White Son, <laughs> it's going to be a double whammy mm-hmm. for Spotted, because not only is he a Native American, he's a veteran. Oh. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. He is a veteran. Like the fight for the oppressor, eh? mm-hmm. Well, actually, it's, well, we, we got, we, we're going yeah, 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 to have to invite you back on yeah, for right, that, yeah, spot so another show. Yeah. But right now, I want to, I'm having a little, I, I brought this to the arena, I brought experts, I brought Kevin, I brought Vince, because I'm, assassination, <laughs> in downtown Moscow, broad daylight. Yeah, right by the Kremlin. Right by the Kremlin. That's like Romney getting shot 
in front of the White, the House. White House. Right. <laughs> it is. I, it is exactly I sound like that. Dallas, Texas to me and a guy named JFK yeah, okay, getting yeah. shot <laughs> from somebody off the greasy nose. No. No. I love okay. that. Okay, greasy nose. No. <laughs> okay, we got two different sides here. So, I, I mean, um, Kevin, Vince. Let me get it back. Who story. wants to go first? There you go. Let me, get, okay. let me get Vince to give me. You know how we start the show. Let me get oh, yeah, I'm sorry. But yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. What we're discussing today is Boris with Nimsov. Nimsov. Uh, right. Boris Nimsov and his murder slash assassination, which happened on February 27th of this year, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, he was walking hand in hand with his girlfriend, Anna Dariska, across the bridge in Moscow. He was shot four times in the back by an unknown assailant um, who fled in a getaway car, which happened, the shooting happened right outside the walls of the Kremlin. And anybody that knows anything about the Kremlin in downtown Moscow, it's one of the most heavily guarded areas in Russia. So how anything that brazen happened in broad daylight is, uh, I don't know. But we're going to talk about that today. We're going to get into some theories. Of okay. Who they think killed him in some box. motives? Some motives. Uh, Cause you know them dang Chechen Muslims, boy. They freaking. Oh, that's, 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 the, that's the number one motive out there is that the Chechen uh, Muslims. You know the Muslims. They're the number, they, one, they, they're they, the number one suspect. What what the, right. what would the they're, motive be behind the, his oh, assassination, though? Okay. Uh, well, the motive, as far as the Chechens are concerned, is that they were angry about uh, Nimsov's stance on the Charlie Hebdo shooting that happened in Paris really? uh, last month. So See, he came out and he spoke out. Blame him. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you know, I'm an atheist. I'm starting to side with uh, <laughs> uh, Ganga here. Cause I'm, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so they were, uh, the theory is that uh, the Chechens were displeased with some comments that Boris Nemtsov had made about uh, the Charlie Hebdo shooting in Paris. Um, and so that's one of the possible theories as to why he was killed. Another theory we can get into is, of course, the United States had something to do with it. Um, it is in the CIA has something to do with that. Putin right. and uh, his right hand man Ramzan Kadyrov. We'll get into him. What uh, would be the motive for the U.S.? Yes. Uh, the motive for the U.S. is that the, the U.S. wanted to uh, destabilize Russian economy and try to cause an uproar, an uprising against, and they did. against Putin well, uh, over in, in Not uh, the Russia. U.S.? You mean they're trying <laughs> to take over another country? Another country, right. It's right. not yep. like they don't did it before. <laughs> who's, who's the third suspect? Who's the third suspect? Yeah. Uh, the third theory, where's my third page here? <clears throat> um, Kremlin TV anchorman Dmitry Kezalev, he also, he backs the Kremlin's uh, theory that the U.S. had something to do with it. Um, he has a quote saying that when he was alive, Nimsov was no longer necessary to the West. He had no prospects. But dead, he was a lot more interesting. Wow. Who group. said that? Uh, Dmitry Keselev, which that is that a, a Kremlin a TV anchorman. Uh, that's what they said. These they said the, uh, they used the word martyr that um, the U.S. was trying to turn Boris Nemtsov and two way martyr. Right. Very weak motives. Very weak <laughs> motives. Who's the third motive? Who's the third suspect and what okay. would that motive be? Okay. Very strong motive. So uh pro government newspaper is Vestia quoted an unnamed police source saying that the U- Ukrainian Secret Service had Boris Nemtsov assassinated. By Chechen hitmen in order to destabilize Russia, they got the Chechens again. The Chechens is in the mix somehow. So to blame the but this theory is that the Ukrainian Secret Service had something to do with it. What would the motive be? President uh, to destabilize they Russia. What's the fourth um, suspect? Do you mean that could have been the Russian Orthodox Church? Could have been. Could have been. I'm, I'm, been. With, I'm waiting on the suspect. I'm waiting to hear. Him. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 we already yeah. know Young is not going with the chest. Yeah, right. We already know that. He's yeah. not going with the chest. Okay. <laughs> right. I'm listening for the, the suspect that has the uh, the the yeah, yeah, most significant biased. motive. Are you being biased? I mean, I mean, we're just listening to the motive. Okay. Okay. Want to right. destabilize the region? Right. But somebody right. stand to gain. A considerable amount of considerable position of uh, to uh, to uh, solidify their power if certain opponents were eliminated. But let's let's go through the okay. Let's okay. Go through okay. Uh, are you referring to Putin? Oh, no. because Putin is, <laughs> Putin is right there. Well, 
let me say this about Putin. Putin has been speculated as having something to do with yeah, it. If you're in Russia, so if you're in Russia, it's even dangerous to speculate. So nobody's right, going to come out and, right. and actually even point the finger. Right. So Putin is saying, again, he's blaming the West. Um, but the theory against Putin is Boris Nemtsov had, he had already spoken out against Putin and corruption in Putin's regime but wait and his a minute, government. Hold on. Putin was leading them by 88%. Come on, really? Seriously. I mean... Look, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. This due to, look, you know how it is to speak out against Putin. Putin, Putin don't stand for that, okay? Putin, you're not going to talk yeah. out against Putin. And statistics what, what, don't mean it. You say Putin was leading by 88%. Right. We can look at the vote. We can look at the votes as well. Netanyahu. Right. You see what I'm saying? Talk yes, we used to talk about the illegal stuff. Okay. Okay. Focus. Okay. So, that's part of the Putin theory that due to... Boris Nemtsov constantly criticizing him for corruption, and he was his biggest uh, critic of the Ukrainian war. Right, and he was actually uh, Boris Nemtsov was actually planning a rally to happen on March first, which was a few days before he got killed. Okay, um, speaking out against Russia, the Kremlin, and this covert war that they have in the Ukraine. Okay, um, but that theory has been given the least amount of credibility mm -hmm. by all sources, the Putin theory. The even in the West? Except in the West. Of course. <laughs> Thank you, say, Kate. That's the, why you, <laughs> you take a look at the New York Times and you might get a different story. But go ahead. <laughs> right. So of course America and in our ally uh, our, but America and its allies, um they are definitely pointing the finger at Putin saying, you know, this guy was Basically airing all your dirty laundry, sure. pretty much, and Putin wanted to silence him. Mm -hmm. You know, he was his biggest opposition, mm -hmm. so Putin wanted to get him out of the way. And not only did he want to get him out of the way, he wanted to do it in such a public way that it would leave a strike some fear that's, that's and leave a John, message. It's called the, uh, the uh, John Gotti technique. Right, right, <laughs> right. Oh, more, more like uh, Lewinsky. Yeah, the <laughs> when she uh, talked about Clinton, and all of a sudden she disappeared. Yeah, exactly. Right, she did, but now she's back in the news, but that's a whole other story, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and it's funny, mm -hmm. right, it's the West, but who owns the Western media? Who pans, who stands more to gain? But I'm like, well, they can make the same <laughs> <I'm> argument <like, laughs> saying who owns the Russian media. Who owns the Chechnyan? Right, which is, why, which is why Putin had a 86, 88% approval rating. Exactly. Right, according to, <laughs> right, according okay. to the Russian poll. Okay. Um, but, of course, Putin came out into quell speculation over the Kremlin involvement he, um, in the death of Nensov. He, he, he condemned his brazen murder and called for an end to shameful political killings that have marked modern Russia. Wow. So he's basically saying, look, we had nothing to do with it. I think this is disgusting that it happened. And he, he even said that I'm going to take the investigation into Boris Nemtsov's murder mm -hmm. into, my, into my own personal hands, <laughs> basically, which is like uh, the FBI saying that they're going to investigate. Cortel, bro. Right. They're, they're sure. going to investigate yeah. the police. Yeah. Here's, you know here's, I mean? here's one better than that, right? Like uh, something hit the Pentagon. But we right. didn't find wings. We didn't find we didn't wings. Find blame the Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't doubt blame the Muslims. That's right. <laughs> so you can invade countries on that. Blame place. the Muslims. <laughs> right. And then, okay, so another theory. You got your theory on Putin. Another theory, uh, which has been advanced by the investigative committee, which is a pro-government committee in Russia, mm -hmm. um, is that the killings were again done by Islamist extremists enraged by Boris Nemtsov's condemnation of the Charlie Hebdo massacre. Look, in you know Paris. how the Muslims are. That's the investigative Isn't they dang doctrine here? Isn't they dang doctrine to talk about, anybody talk about Muhammad killing? It's been proven. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Ain't that just like what they said to us, right? That the only good engine is a dead <laughs> engine. <laughs> look, look, look at And they was good, honest Christian folk. Yeah. Listen here. Yeah. That it's we called got a problem with Christians on the panel. The doctrine of discovery here, <laughs> Mr. Wilkes. Mm -hmm. The doctrine of discovery. But well, the doctrine of discovery says, right, the CIA did it. Somebody in Langley smoking a cigar saying, okay, well, we got away with the Pentagon. We did this here, right, right under the nose of them goddamn Russians, and we got away just like we did when we did Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. 
Wait, wait. You should take on that, Kevin, because I'm. Well, I think I think one. Uh, I would like to put the assassination in a certain context. Okay. You know, where are we in the region, right? Okay. Right now, Ukraine has basically split split down the middle. Right. The Donbas region, this southeast region in Ukraine, has gone with Russia. The uh, East Ukraine has gone with the West. You have in power Petro Poroshenko, who we all uh, in the West have supported. Uh, everybody in the West has supported. That was after the ouster of Yanukovych back in the, we had the year anniversary, February 2014. Correct. Um, and so I think what we need to look at now is what's going on. And what is going on is on February 11th, there was a meeting. It was called Minsk II. That's what the agreement is called. The Americans were not invited. U.S. was not invited because right now Europe is saying, oh my gosh, we have a catastrophe. The Americans are talking about sending weapons. We rely on Russian oil. We rely on Russian resources. Right. Nemtsov was part of the group that said, hey, Europe's going to be fine. Don't worry about Europe. Uh, don't worry. You can get your gas from the United States. Right. Why would Nemtsov say that? Nemtsov was part of the United States coalition in Moscow. Mm. Nemtsov, right. Nemtsov used to, he would go on, shortly before he was killed, he went on the BBC, mm -hmm. you know, British news, right? right? Western news, right. Western media. He went on there with Strobe Talbot. Strobe Talbot is the head of the Brookings Institute. Strobe Talbot was the architect of NATO expansion. He admits it in his autobiography. He talks about how when he worked under Clinton, and Clinton was the one who said, screw this, we're going to go and we're going to keep expanding NATO. That was under Clinton in the 90s. Right. This has been, this is, and, and doesn't matter whether you have a Democrat or Republican in the White House, they both supported NATO expansion. Right. The United States, that we have a, bi <laughs> that's right, we have a bipartisan agreement to support NATO expansion, despite, the, and there are even some, you know, some people in the power structure who have spoken out against this, people that I don't like. But I, but are thinking about we don't want to go to nuclear war. So George Kennan and people like um, what's his name um, um, Henry Kissinger. Right. These guys are not guys that I find to be particularly appealing. Right. Uh, I don't like them. You don't like Henry Kissinger? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think Henry Kissinger is a war criminal. He should be. And if we were going to treat him like war criminals are typically treated in the United States or elsewhere, he should be hanged. Oh. Now. I'm not an advocate for the death penalty, right. but the reality is that we've hung people for less. And <laughs> uh, but but with that said, Henry Kissinger also agrees that we should not be doing what we're doing. NATO expansion needs to stop. Why does he think that? Because nuclear war is on the table. Mm. Because mm -hmm. real war with Russia is an option. And so at this point, you have Nemtsov, who's really the pro-U.S. voice, the pro-Western voice. And I don't mean Henry Kissinger voice. I mean the hawks who want war with Russia. I'm talking about Victoria Newland from the State mm. Department, the woman who was on the phone. Remember the phone call? John she McCain. said, we want uh, Yatsen Yuk in power. We don't want yeah. Vitaly Klitschko, this woman. Then you have, um, also you have uh, uh, Senator John McCain, That's right. who we were talking about earlier, Wolf and I were talking about. John McCain has been, his whole family has been wrapped up in U.S. imperial wars in the past. Like John McCain, mm -hmm. that's right. anyone that support ISIS, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> right. uh, you know, they, they were over there early on feeding cookies to the protesters and saying, go out and fight for <laughs> democracy right. in Kiev. Now, they, there was an option for democracy. That was an option at one point. But then we had the year mm -hmm. anniversary in February. Right. Yanukovych fled. Uh, this was just over a year ago. Right. And, uh, and, uh, Petro Poroshenko was brought to power. Now, here's what's happening. Uh, there was, there's been fighting in the Donbass region, okay? You have uh, the strongholds are Luhansk and Donetsk. And between them is this area called, it's a city called Debaltseva. And that's where the fighting kind of started getting really serious. Oh, absolutely. And uh, so this is in February when Minsk II was happening, when the, these leaders were meeting to agree uh, there, there was fighting happening there, and the East, you, Eastern Ukrainians, the forces that we've been supporting, yeah. they were driven out. They were mm. driven out by people, and some say it's Russia. I say it's actually pro-Russian people who live there that are doing the fighting. You the think separatists. you can watch Vice News? Yeah. You're talking about the separatists? 
Uh, I'm talking about the the people in the region. <coughs> what, I don't know what the term serpentis. What would that be? No, the separatists no, no. would be the. Real oh, the separatists. Yes, separatists. yes, yes. The separatists okay. doing the fighting. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. So, uh, you had Petro Poroshenko at this meeting with leader of Germany, um, Angela Angela Angela, Angela Merkel, Merkel, and uh, uh, the French president Hollande, and uh, the Russian. President Vladimir Putin. The four of them said, they came to an agreement in Minsk II, and they said, look, the fighting needs to stop. The eastern, like Kiev, needs to pull back its artillery. If they're not willing to do that, if they're not willing to retreat, then we're going to attack, and we're just going to destroy everything. We're going to destroy all of, because the Kiev does not have a lot of power right now. <clears throat> eastern Ukraine does not have the fighting battalions. They don't have the troops. What they do have, they have these battalions that are fighting very aggressively. Those are controlled by neo-Nazis. Those are controlled by very scary people that nobody wants to see in power. However, the West, that means uh, the U.S., you know, John McCain and his whole crew, yes. they are willing to side with these neo-Nazi well, crazy not? people because well, that's that's who they can ally with. That's who they're ready to ally with. So yeah, Petro Poroshenko. Like, right, right. right. And it furthers our interest, right? And, so, and so, it furthers our so what we got here, right, is we got the Nazis on one side mm -hmm. and the Ku Klux Klan on the other. And the fascists on, on the other side. <laughs> and they cooking yeah. up together, yeah. right, to do white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I've got to sit back and check on the Sons of Confederate Red and see if they got a piece of this here action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now comes the fun part. There is three paid U.S. contract armies in the Ukraine. Mm. Okay. Look at this. this has been proven, and they take their orders from language. Mm. Now comes the one thing that everybody's not thinking about. Who's controlling the oil fields? Break it down. So if you control the oil field, you control the money flow. You control the money flow, you control the economics. Which means if I control the economics mm -hmm. and I don't like your village, I'm not feeding your village. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Suppose, who, who are you building this motive of murder to? I mean, I hear the money trail, but who does this, this trail of money Who's got... To? Because, you know, um, you got CIA, like you said. There's, something, there's something worse than CIA out there. What? You keep forgetting. You keep saying CIA. Mm -hmm. How come nobody's talking about NSA? NSA no such agency. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no one's talking about the <laughs> NSA. <laughs> now, when you talk about the NSA, you're talking about the Mossad. Yeah. Because remember, right, they're upset because the Russians aren't letting their Jews immigrate to Palestine, yeah. or as they call it, Israel. Yeah. Wait a minute, you're not going to disrespect um, um, uh, Putin, I mean, uh, Bibi. Bibi. Benjamin Netanyahu, you're not going to disrespect Oh, you him. mean the guy who he won sat this, back yeah. and gave the orders to sink the U.S. liberty at international waters and killed Americans mm. on a supposedly peaceful mission, used mirage jets and machine gun and cannon the poor men that were in their life rafts? Look here, you're not going to talk that way about same our allies. Is the same right. as the <laughs> that, that is the United States ally, and they would never do such a thing because the United States itself would not allow it. Now, our allies have got a thing called Operation Samson. Okay. Look it up. Operation Samson? Samson. Why don't you break it down too? It's there. It's Operation it's Samson are German-made nuclear launch submarines sitting off the coast of the United States. Samson, when he was going to kill the Philistines and he knew he was going to die, what did he do? He destroyed the city. Pushed the temple, pushed the temple down on itself. And killed everybody. Killed everybody. Operation Samson. And if you talk about the Muslims. Blame the Muslims! They're fanatic. I you mean, tell me people blaming the Muslims are fanatic, look, man. I'm looking at all cards on the yeah. table here. But well, on the serious side, though, NSA is who you got to watch. Yeah. They keep saying CIA. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting to tell me the NSA would send a spy or an assassin. I mean, they caught the culprits there, Mr. Spotterwood. Oh, they caught who they think they caught. Mm -hmm. they, That's like right. uh, didn't they catch some Chechen Muslims? They, they, they caught five Chechen Chechen Muslims right. um, for the alleged assassination. Mm -hmm. Right for the alleged assassination of Boris uh, Nemtsov. Mm -hmm. It was Tamerlan 
Eskerkanov, Shagid Gubashi, mm-hmm. Kamat Bakiv, Ruslan Jeremiah, and Zahir Dadier. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the five suspects of Chechen, uh, uh, from Chechnya that they have in custody. Of course, they're all saying that they didn't do it and so they were cool. set up. But first, mm-hmm. when they were first arrested, uh, they said that they confessed to the whoa, whoa, who to said, the, whoa, whoa, whoa. the five who Chechens, said they confessed the five the, who the Russian confessed? security services the, right. what is it FSB mm-hmm. is what they're called mm-hmm. right. the offshoot of the KSB mm-hmm. the FSB said that these five men confessed to the killings but when uh, when civil rights people went in to check on them in the prison human rights people yeah they they were they recanted their uh, confessions. Wait, they wait, said wait, that I'm they confused. were tortured into making said confession. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, so they were actually tortured. So they actually That's what they said after the fact. When they were initially re- arrested, I believe two or three of them confessed. But then, once uh, people from the Civil Rights Abuses Amnesty, went in, right. went in to um, check on them, right. they were like, no, we didn't kill anybody. We were brought in here and we beat the crap out of And they told us if we didn't say that this happened, then such and such X Y Z would happen. What justice system does that remind us of? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the same one that said you did not see Eric Gardner get choked out. That was not a choke, yeah. but it looked right. okay. Obviously. And yeah. so, the mother of two of the suspects, she's saying she's claiming their innocence and saying they were they were set up. But they're family members, of course they're gonna. That's uh, my baby. He didn't do it. I mean, come on. Well, you know, there there's uh, the Chechens have a reputation for being pretty brutal over there in uh well of course they the do the Czech most region. In, in, sure right in the Russia and in, in there have been two wars in that region right that the strong man that you mentioned uh, uh has Raz- kept control for Putin yeah. Ramzan Katerov yeah. mm-hmm. the second this- war started out when they supposedly no I said supposedly got a school with 350 children and that. killed half of them yeah, yeah. I do. oh I remember that yeah let's mm-hmm. see no one talked about the 152 millimeter rounds that start landing in the playground. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about Katarov a little bit because apparently he's a beast. Explain who this is again. Um, Razman Katarov. He is the strongman leader of Chechnya. And part of Russia. Part, part of, of Russia. this southern, eastern region of Russia. Yeah. Right. Okay. And he is basically the right hand man to Putin. Uh, he's claimed his loyalty. I thought Chechnya seceded. It's a it's yeah. a republic, right. and it's so republic. the way that it works in Russia is that you have uh, people who lead republics, okay. uh, different republics, Republic. but they're still federated with Russia. Okay, it's right. like a reservation. And it, it oh, basically okay. says that Putin has allowed has allowed <coughs> Katarov to effectively create the Islamic Republic mm-hmm. right. um, that the Chechen separatists had always dreamed of, albeit this Islamic Republic is entirely reliant on Moscow for financial support. Right. And the Sharia law is selective and not absolute, meaning, you know, you Putin's don't have smart. To. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, smart. Damn, smart. sound I mean, like a reservation to me. Yeah, that's basically what it is. <laughs> right. We, yeah, we, we will give you health care and everything else, and if you don't act right and don't let us put this Which pipeline through well, the area. <laughs> they're not giving health care, but they did, you know, the Kremlin did uh, help finance uh, Katarov in rebuilding Grozny, uh, which is the city in that area. Um, he al- they also gave them the money for the weaponry, weaponry that they have mm-hmm. um, and, allowed, and allowed them, Katarov, to build uh, and that's this, how he's the security his, troop. Right. And that's right. how he's going to keep his ties and, 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 and keep their allegiance. Right. By having them, you know, by constantly funding, rebuilding the thing, but at the same time giving them, uh, at the very least, the illusion of freedom by giving them the right to go on and practice their Islam and being a... I remember when they were fighting right. for their rights are fighting to succeed. That's why I said I thought they had succeeded. So, really, I don't know how to take back Putin. Is That's pretty ingenious, though. Right. That's pretty ingenious. Well, you keep, down, I mean, it's just ingenious. You keep, you you know, you give the people their freedom of life. You put your man in. You already know you're going to have your affiliation and your ties, but you allow them to govern themselves to a certain degree and, and that way keeping their allegiance. You know, so even right. if they did assassinate, the Chechens did assassinate them, they could assassinate them at Putin's behest. Right, and that's the theory that's that right. if that the Chechens the did 
the other ones that pulled the trigger. The word came from Putin. Yeah, because that's because he got his boy they, in place. They, right, they, they, that's his boy who. And those are his. That's his personal. What is, what is this quote? Uh, he is known for. This is Katerov. He is known for ruthlessly eliminating critics at home and abroad. CBN. In Moscow, okay. he is widely resented by the security security services of the Kremlin for being allowed to operate with impunity. Mm-hmm. So he basically gets to do whatever he wants to do because he's. Uh, Wait a minute, you're yeah. Putin's right hand man. Putin's right hand man, and he's a Muslim. <laughs> right. No, and no, no. That, I'm glad you said yeah. that. Man. No, and they're basically saying that Putin, uh, Putin has basically turned a blind eye to whatever mm-hmm. this man does. So you guys yeah. just <laughs> he got him a mercenary squad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, that kind of sound like the White House. Yeah. Wow. Lord, right. Let me see. Uh, I lost these text messages. <laughs> right. Uh, then they can't be recovered. Uh, another one like the IRS. <laughs> the uh, IRS. I right. lost these, mm-hmm. but I'm terrorizing good American citizens, but I'm terrorizing them. The illegal revolution. Illegal. Right. The illegal, <laughs> illegal revolution. I just want to make one quick comment, and that is, you know, when you say something like uh, this plan that Putin has, th- this relationship mm-hmm. that he's established is ingenious. I want to be clear that, that I agree with you that it's ingenious. That doesn't mean that I endorse... No, it's diabolical. Right. <laughs> right. It's diabolical. And, and I it's, think... It's ingenious. Yeah, I think it's important that we have a conversation where we say, what's the smart move? And, yeah. and separate that maybe from what's the right move. Right. And then try to, try to come to an agreement of what's the best right move that we can make, mm-hmm. you know? And so what can we be critical of? So, yes, I agree that Vladimir Putin has done this. I don't think that this guy should be allowed... Because... As, uh, as um, Vince was telling us, Kedyarov, uh, the guy, the Chechen leader, he's been brutal. And mm-hmm. um, and he's kind of like Putin's uh, buddy. No, because he's right. Exactly. He's right, 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 right. And the point that I was trying to get to earlier was that if, if the Chechens are guilty and Kedyarov has come to these guys' defense, because one of them used to be in his security group, mm-hmm. one of them used to be... One of the him. suspects. Yeah, one of the suspects. And he said this guy is a true Russian more patriot. Than one, okay. Yeah, more Kedyarov than one suspect. has dedicated complete allegiance to Putin. And uh, and so if Putin okayed, you know, mm-hmm. they both didn't like this guy. Yeah. If Putin okayed it, uh, my thinking, and this is coming from a comment that uh, Stephen Cohen, who's a professor of Russian studies and, and different things, he said, you know, maybe this all is really about the Minsk II agreement. Mm. That agreement being the only possible peaceful solution for the region is to say Ukraine, not part of NATO, uh, the Kiev has to institute some sort of federation where the Donbass region gets to represent themselves. Mm. And then eventually, if that happens... They're allowed to be part of Ukraine, but they have to not Crimea. Crimea stays with Russia. With Russia, right? But um, but the Donbas region gets to have a federated, a little bit of autonomy in its government. Then Russia is willing to give Kiev control over the Russian-Ukrainian border again. Mm-hmm. That's part of this Minsk II agreement. Mm-hmm. Now there are people who don't want that agreement to happen. Victoria Newland, who I mentioned, Senator McCain, who I mentioned, and Nemtsov, who mm-hmm. is now dead. Mm-hmm. Now, the question I think that we we can ask is, what did Stephen Cohen mean by that? Well, I think what he meant when he said it on, on uh, television was that, I think what he meant was that right now the only thing holding the region to possible, possible peaceful solution is this Minsk II agreement that took place on February 11th mm. between Germany, France, Russia, and the leader of Ukraine. Mm. And Obama has said, if If Angela Merkel's agreement at Minsk II, if it holds through, then we won't send weapons. Now he's getting he's getting beaten back, even by the Democratic Party, saying that's unacceptable. You need to send these weapons. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even convinced that Obama's completely guilty on this front. She's guilty of a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't like the drone strikes. I don't like a lot of stuff. I think maybe he just doesn't know the right thing to do and have the political strength to To do do it. it. I think Obama's on a screw you campaign on his last year going out. (laughs) Well, I I, I I honestly do. I I think that he's going. I mean, when you look at what the uh, the uh, lifting the embargo on Cuba, uh, giving the immigrant (laughs) citizen, giving giving so many immigrant citizens. Why did he lift the embargo on Cuba? Aha! Why? Because China just gave Mexico. $250 $250 billion to redeal its infrastructure. Mm-hmm. If you look at China, China is now 
all over the world. China's in Africa. Yeah, yeah. China's yeah. everywhere. And China is doing it. They, need they to worry had about. to do it because if mm. not, Latin America is going to slowly go to the Chinese. Now, let me tell you what I like about Putin. Putin, Putin's Russia is now in uh, a friendly, how would I call it, trade agreement with China. Now they're going militarily. Mm. What people are afraid of, right, is Putin is getting too much power. Mm. Right. And the reason the U.S. wants to send its weapons there, right, every bullet, every mill, every gallon, somebody's getting paid. You're not Absolutely. looking at the Absolutely. big Absolutely. military Absolutely. complex and who's getting paid. Mm. I got billions of dollars worth of weapons, right, mm. just sitting here. Let's send them to Ukraine so I can get paid. Mm -hmm. How much money did Dick Cheney and his group make off of Iraqi freedom? Yeah. Uh, billions, mm -hmm. right, say. Right. Trillions. I'd, Trillions. I'd add to that that, you know, when we look at what happened in the 1930s, the economy was terrible in the U.S., Go capitalism, on. yeah, yeah, capitalism <laughs> is, is on the verge of collapse again. Mm. I mean, in 2008, the housing market and all mm. that. But we resolved the issues in 1930, partly through World War II. Yeah. And so I do think that using war to, uh, to boost our economy, because that's vast government yeah. spending that's yeah. pumped back into these contractors that we <clears throat> support, like you mentioned <clears throat> earlier, I think that's one way to try to stabilize the economy. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah. Um, right. But... I we always do. Any time the economy's in danger, go to war. Yeah. Vince, I interrupted you earlier, though. You were kind of oh, yeah. making I a was point. just talking about the iron fisted. Uh, but it, I want to make a point, and we go back to um, um, and I forget his name. What's the leader of the uh, chess 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 team? Mm -hmm. Cat, what is it? Kadyarov. 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 That that it was like you were saying Kediarov. that it's ingenious, diabolical. That it may be, it's ingenious. But one of the things that is happening here, why he has the, the allegiance and the loyalty of his people is because Putin is feeding him. So he's going to act as, you know, if you're taking care of those people, he's going to act as a the reason that they have to be united with them or pro-Russian and why his people are going to be pro-Russian. But I think that one of the things, and this is what I talk about when we talked about Islam earlier, the political aspect That's of right, Islam. Right. But I think that once um, it's really brought to his people what's really happening, that a lot of that, a lot of that would change. And I just wanted to just, just throw that out okay. there. A lot of that would change. The Russians have a saying. A hungry man is like a wolf that goes anywhere you tell him as long as you feed his belly. Yeah. And, too, I want to say this. It goes, too, to say, and I like that, as long as you go anywhere you tell him as long as you feed his belly. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. that good. And, too, I want to say there again, and going back to I like, this shows the power of ethnicity over cultural influences. We got to remember, though they're Muslim, they are Russians. But that's going to be, and that's, that's, I want to put that out there. So they're going to look at, Go you know, that. Well, that, you disagree with that. No, no, no. Finish oh. your statement. Then okay. Yeah, so they're going to, they're going to, they're going to look at that. So they're still going to have some, you know, some inkling and leanings towards that. That was actually one of the uh, concerns about Boris Nemtsov because he was saying that the relationship between uh, Putin and Katarov was disintegrating. Basically, he was oh. saying it wasn't as strong as it used to be. Even though Katerov has made statements saying, I am utterly devoted to Vladimir right. Putin and ready until the end of my life to resist the enemies of Russia. Right. He <laughs> said, hold on, he okay. said this, he said whether Putin is in office or not, he still holds this to be true. But there was a little conflict between Katerov and Putin back in December because Katerov had been burning the houses of people he claimed were uh, against Russia. And he was really making a lot of people homeless, so mm -hmm. Putin had something to say about that, which Katarov it didn't really he has sit, to. He's a diplomat. sit too he, well with Katarov. Yeah. Right. You gotta make right. a public say this is wrong. He goes, oh, this is, take <laughs> right. these matches. They don't like Russia. This right. is wrong. <laughs> yeah. They're all about having the liar behind take your back. Right. right. They're anti Russian. And that's a game that yeah. great powers, leaders they, they of great play. powers play. play. Yeah. Ask Absolutely. the United States, right. Yes. And so what Nemtsov wrote was about, in regards to this disintegrating relationship between Katarov and Putin, uh, Boris Nemtsov wrote, what will happen next? The country is entering a crisis. There is not enough money for anything, including the support of regions. In the unspoken contract between Putin and Katarov, money in exchange for loyalty ends. 
Where would the 20,000 Katarovsky go? That's the name of his military army, Katarovsky. Mm -hmm. Katarovsky. He had his own army on the Putin, mm -hmm. 20,000 deep. He said, where would the 20,000 Katarovsky go? What would they demand? How would they behave? When would they come to Moscow? Now, he's worried about them coming to Moscow because, like he said, mm -hmm. they're Russian-speaking Muslims. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they can blend in a little bit more easier and, you know, if they really wanted to. Well, the ticket is they're pro-Russian. I think that even after, I think that that's going to be the strong. I mean, we can look at maybe. Wait, well, Yang, are you saying them being Russian overrides them being Muslim? Being Muslim, yeah. I think Russian? that they're two separate things. Break it down, please. Um, one, you know, Islam is their culture, Islam is their practice, but their ethnicity is Russia. Their motherland is Russia. They have a vested interest of their ancestral origin. So I think that you, you can be pro, like, you know, I'm pro African in America and I'm a Muslim. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I have my. my practices and things of Islam, but I'm still want to see the advancement, the empowerment of, of black people, you know what I'm saying, in this country. And I think that is the same thing with that. I think that the money sweetens the pot, but at the same time, even after Putin or something, that they're going to be pro-Russian. And that if anybody is in bed or catering to Western powers, that they're going to be against. Right, because Federal going, doesn't like the West. Exactly. Either. They're going to be against them, and they're being pro-Russian and Muslim only adds to that. That's like double anti-Western, you know what I'm saying? So I think that that's what, one of the things, I think that that's the relationship that, like I said, money sweetens the deal, but the um, relationship with Putin, the fact that they're, like he said, he said, I'm utterly dedicated to Putin and everything, but I am pro-Russian. And I think that that's what has to be looked at. We keep saying Muslim, 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 and, but to them, right. the ethnicity, like I told you before, and, and be brief, us as an African people, we're some of the only people I know that base our ethnicity on our glad theology. Glad you said that. No, I'm glad you said that, Young. That's a very based important on lesson. What? Theology. Theology. I said yeah, you yeah, can yeah, ask anybody yeah, right. what their ethnicity. You ask an Asian man, what are you? You say I'm Japanese. I'm Korean. I'm Chinese. You ask a Latin Latin Latin, Latin man, what are you? I'm Cuban. I'm El Salvadorian. Puerto I'm Mexican. Rican. You ask the black man, what are you? I'm Baptist. I'm a Muslim. No. <laughs> That's I'm a Christian. You know what I'm saying? So we base our ethnicity. We base our ethnicity <laughs> on our theology. And we don't put we don't have a common goal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't have a common goal or a common objective as far as African people here in America and we don't unify on the same like I'm sure here Spotted Wolf being that's why I'm glad we have a Native American here can can uh, you know really relate to that and speak on that because one of the things that even in the studies of the Native Americans that divided them is when some of the tribes went over and started to get with 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 these uh these invaders mm -hmm. that the came over, yeah the settlers yes, yes, yes. that that came over See, here but mm -hmm. when you put your ethnicity first when you say hey look okay we different tribes different cultural practices but we need them right now we need to chill the hell out because we got one common enemy that's trying to exterminate us okay real, real quick I gotta, I gotta put spotted wolf on the spot and then we can back on top of you this is a little side note I can get yeah, yeah, myself yeah, for yeah. getting off topic gather yourself let me see you do it in the forehead let I'm, me see gonna you. Add, I'm gonna <laughs> ask I'm, I'm gonna gather myself I'm gonna ask spotted wolf this question and this kind of relates to the last show because you talk about how certain Native Americans went over to certain side yeah spotted wolf were there cultural differences between the Native Americans that they couldn't agree on? Were they warring, basically? Well, right now you're talking about a united Native America. We all now. Wait, I'm talking. See, look at him. Back I'm in the old I'm days, going. right? Um, we used to fight amongst ourselves. Right. It's like uh, like it is now. Asking the black community for unity, we didn't have unity. Mm -hmm. okay. Now unity has come. But back then, they played one tribe against, against another. another. Right, right. But I'm going to tell you, the against biggest the danger right now facing the Native American is the interracial marrying of Native Americans with white people. Okay, really? let me ask you a question. Let me ask you really? A okay, hold on. Hold on. So, so, so as a Native American, as you, as, now I'm going to take it back to Ukraine. Boy, if we don't get him back for a cultural show. Oh, we're going to get him back yeah, for a cultural yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, we're going yeah, yeah. to do a cultural show. We're going to do a part two with, with Spider Wolf on here. But I want to get back to the Ukraine because I'm still try I'm still not hearing a solid motive here. I'm hearing, I'm for still, but it's murder. For Nemtsov murder? The solid motive is right, money. 
Yeah. In, in the Ukraine, they're trying to get the Ukraine in the European Union or something to this effect. And, right. and we're looking at the Solomon that they, a pro-Western uh, person, a proponent for, and, and someone who supported the pro-Western ideas and things of this nature was murdered. It's just about getting. It's just about getting the Ukraine back and, and pro Russia. This is why I'm saying that they're trying to say. And even if it was the Chechens that had something to do with it, we still have to look at that they're pro Russian. I'm here to advocate the Islam to stop blaming everything on the Muslims. No, I'm that just, it is not not just okay, saying you. Okay, I'm just saying right. the world. No, it's no, easier I, yeah, to do right. that, but there are political there are political motives behind this. And one of the political motives is the the, the brother, my brother. I had to say my brother. Shalom alaikum, brother. <laughs> that is Katerov. Yeah, yeah Katerov. <laughs> but he is pro Russian. And I think that that's the incentive and the, and the motive. So you if say they, should, they, should, they, should they be involved in So he, even if they blame the Muslims, it still goes back to Putin. What you're saying? I don't right, think, because Putin yeah. would have had to give the word. Go ahead. Kevin. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think. I think Putin. I don't think they would have assassinated Nemtsov in front of the capital right. in Moscow right. without Putin saying. Yeah, I'm given the word, and say and do it. Do it. I, right. I don't think that uh, Kedyarov would have done that Kedyarov. without a little nod from Putin. I don't think you're ever going to be able to trace anything back to Putin. No, I, won't. I, I just yeah, don't think won't. it's going to happen. I think, it um, I think it was a CIA. Right, but, and then really? there's there are because, certainly... Like I said, right? but, hold on, hold on, before oh, we get okay. to the CIA, yeah. because okay. back to this Putin thing. Because here, here are uh, a little facts, few facts that feed into the whole Putin theory and him having Clear up from Nimsov the dances, I'm killed. still yeah. Okay, a few days after Nemtsov was killed, Putin gave a state award to Katerov and to Andrei Legovoy, who was charged by Britain with the killing of the fugitive Russian intelligence officer Alexander Litvinenko by poisoning his tea with radioactive polonium. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, so the de couple of days after Boris Nemtsov is killed. Putin gives an award. Putin gives an award to Katerov, who has already declared himself as a, a, a an allegiant Russian, Putin supporter. <laughs> right, allegiant. Right. I mean, Russian. almost like worshiping, right? Right. You know, Katerov. He's he's described in Russia as an Islamist warlord, Russian nationalist. To your point, Russian and a nationalist. fierce, fierce Putin loyalist. Right. Okay, fierce Putin loyalist. So that happened a couple of days after uh, Katerov was killed. Mm. A few, Not Nemtsov. Nemtsov was killed. Uh, Nemtsov was killed. Right, I'm right, right. Thank you, Kevin. Um, a few days or weeks before Nemtsov was killed, he was on a radio station, and he had stated that he feared that President Putin might try to have him killed. Oh, okay. Okay? Right. Putin, some gangster stuff. So yeah. there's all these mm -hmm. implications and reasons, and, and, and besides the biggest fact that Kevin pointed out, that Nemtsov was in favor of Western sanctions on Russia. Okay? Right, yeah. He, yeah. he okay, lobbied, <laughs> he lobbied for more sanctions on Russia. Yeah, why and, would he do that? That's and kind of because he, okay, okay. we're going to get to that. Uh, Nemtsov used to be part of uh, Boris Yeltsin's uh, presidential mm -hmm. cabinet. Right. Uh, he right. was the prime minister from 97 to 98. Okay. And so he, and he was also on an economic panel in 97, 98 to build Russia's economic right, infrastructure that. and stuff. And so with that, he has infi inside information as to how Western outsiders can really apply mm. pressure oh, on to, Russia. to uh, Russia's economy. On the old Ooh. leadership in Russia. That's right. right. That's okay. right. That's what Yeltsin right. represented. Right. Uh, was I'm the, seeing motive here. Was a uh, Yeltsin and uh, and um, uh, Nemtsov yeah. both represent this group in Russia that goes against the old power in Russia, uh -huh. the Soviet right. Uh, right. Union power. Right. Uh, they go against the old power. They want to turn Russia into a capitalist yep. nation yep. Yep. that has. You know, they they want to hammer in the sickle. Right, right. They they do. Right. And when Yeltsin was president, you know, he privatized tons of resources, yes. privatized it, sold it off mm. to Russian oligarchs, mm. and Putin came in and nationalized a lot of those resources mm. right. again. Now you can disagree or agree or whatever, and there's all kinds of arguments about it. But the fact is that Nemtsov, I think, I wouldn't even say he's pro Western so much as he is pro us uh, well i think <laughs> pro I, I think he's kind of in cahoots with the pro us really mm. aggressive um hawkish people who want war with russia and will not tolerate 
any sort of different ideas in the, in the sphere of influence in the world that are not pro-Western, that are not pro-U.S. being in charge. Mm -hmm. Nemtsov really represents what the United States wants. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was a dangerous... And I'm not saying that he should have been killed for it. <laughs> right. I'm not saying that. I think we can all condemn the violence. Right. But I think that's a dangerous pos position to right. hold publicly in office. Would that mean yeah. that... Um, hmm... I'm hearing your thing, so I'm going to throw something at you. Okay. Christian United States, mm -hmm. remember, we're a Christian nation. Right. Have assassinated a Russian who backed up on a deal. And like I said, it's always about the almighty dollar. Oh, it always comes mm -hmm. down to money. Mm -hmm. Money and, and power. And that's what it coming down to, who got paid. Now, we're talking about assassination in broad daylight. Right. Who does that a lot around here? Now, uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, I do believe they're called the mafia. I think that's a loaded question. Yeah, it is a loaded question. <laughs> oh, hell of a loaded question. And see, nobody, see, nobody's looking at that. You keep forgetting you got Russian mobsters. Mm -hmm. That's what, what I, happens if a certain group Vince, lost their Putin. money Putin. Don't don't when <laughs> Putin nationalized, say, certain oil fields and they mm -hmm. wanted to embarrass him? Mm -hmm. True, but I, I mean, and, and, and you know, but my, my, my point, my contingency on, on that is, like you said, I think a lot of it is largely symbolic. Me being from the streets, old gangster, too, it's called sending a message. Okay. It's like you can't prove it, but, right, right. you know, but the people That's on the right. street, you know, kind of know it. So I'm going to do it in front of the Kremlin, well, you and, then, look like and then I'm going to do it in front of the Kremlin, and then I'm going to give an award out. Cause you can't right. believe it. <laughs> right, right, right. But to all my haters, man, good to all job. My haters, right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> thank you. You know, get your mind right. right. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no, you're in the war. You know, so it's, we have to be careful not yeah. to like sound like conspiracy theorists. Yeah. I, I right, right. Sir, personally, I try to be careful not to sound like yeah, that because right. I think you should back it up with fact. Yeah. Right. But I think a lot of what Yanga is expressing is uh, is is how some people feel. Uh, at this right, particular right. time, I, I also that. think that people feel because they're and the, people are split in yeah. Russia. Yeah. There are people out there who went out and uh, you oh, know they had a huge rally, maybe fifty thousand people in Moscow after the death, and there are people who are saying the CIA did this mm -hmm. or right. saying the Ukrainians, the the Eastern Ukrainians did this. So, you know, I, I forgive me. I can tell you what I think happened. I can guess, but I don't think we're going to solve the murder. But if I had to guess, I would I would agree with what Yang is well, saying. Not so much solve the murder. Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just hearing. I want to hear a strong motive here. And sure. I, well, I always, you know, kind of gave one. Right, 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 right. right. I but, mean, yeah, this sanctions like, thing is pretty strong. You know. Yeah, that is because especially to nationalists. Right, and actually. and they and they basically said that the sanctions. You know, Russia expected the sanctions when they went in and took Crimea and all this over mm -hmm. to Ukraine. But they didn't expect for the sanctions to hit their banking and corporate mm -hmm. sector so hard. Wow. So Russia's really losing some money due to this uh, to these sanctions. Ooh. And Vladimir Milov, uh, one of Nemtsov's colleagues and the leader of the Russian political party Democratic Choice, he told CBS News that Putin and his closest allies blame Nemtsov for the seriousness of Western sanctions uh, because. Of course, they don't like to take the blame for themselves. He said this after the death? He said this after the death. He's still running his Right. Life. They don't like He's still to, talking. <laughs> he <laughs> said, still talking. Milov said they don't like to take blame themselves. They prefer to appoint someone to be guilty. Mm -hmm. um, and again, Milov was the one that said, uh, and this is the quote, Nemtsov was a very dangerous person, someone who could explain to other governments about sanctions and where the Putin regime would be most vulnerable. Yes. Given that, Ooh. Given that fact... Given the fact that Nemtsov was his biggest, was Putin's biggest opposition to the Ukraine war and was organizing a rally, uh, the rally was supposed to be, I think, three days later yes. on March 1st. Um, to me, that speaks of a lot of circumstantial evidence that's pointing right. um, to Putin wanting to get this man out of the way. He's already uh, written stuff and given out pamphlets on Putin's regime and their corruption. Oh, um, man. Yeah, he, they were doing it big. One of his friends, one of Putin's colleagues, uh, Alex N Navalny, he was in jail when, uh, when Nemtsov was murdered, and he wasn't allowed to go to Nemtsov's funeral because he was serving a 15-day prison sentence for 
pamphleteering. You know what right, that is? You know, <laughs> you know what pamphleteering is? And to me, that's one of the most cold-blooded things about this whole situation. What's that government? Is this an atheist country? Is Russia an atheist no, country? No, don't start no. that. <laughs> I'm just curious. You can't even have pamphlets out. Who? 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 Like you can't. Oh, 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 look at the new laws on the books. If you come to where a politician is and come within a certain feet of them with a pamphlet, you can go to jail. Mm. But so, I mean, what, what is what is their religious practice? Is not me, Russia's me, not an atheist country. They're no, not they're a communist country. Russia, not an Russian Orthodox, Orthodox Church. Yeah, okay. yeah. Putin has declared himself so, okay. yeah leader of the flock. To answer your question, Yankee. Was that the leader of what flock? The Christian flock. Okay, all right, I'm just checking. Now, all right, now last but, I thought, the majority of the communists were were, were atheists. So I. He's telling you. Um, oh, yeah, all right. Well, I would say that, yeah, Orthodox, Russian Orthodox Christians are kind of the old school, the old, the, the old controllers of the Soviet Union. Yeah. That party still exists. Those people still exist. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have Jewish Russians mm -hmm. who have undergone a lot of, a lot of uh, persecution and right. different things uh, right. in different times. So there, are, there is a diversity. And Nemtsov was that, uh, a former Jew. Nimsov was a he was a what former Jew. He's he, 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 he a Baptist now. Well, Nimsov was a Baptist at the time. Okay. I think right now the Russian Orthodox. Russian uh, Orthodox. Now, okay. what I like about Russian Orthodox, they do have a black Madonna. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. they so, know the truth. So, so they know the truth, they right? The truth, mm. and they're not trying to mind control people like they do here. Mm. Mm -hmm. Remember, people, Ephesians six five. Slaves, obey thy master. That, that's for you, good. You just got same so, slave, boy. So <laughs> get back to theories, and you were talking about facts. Yeah. Um, the official <laughs> talking about facts, right? <laughs> <laughs> the official uh, line over there in Russia, the the uh, two official theories that they're going with uh, as to why Nimsov was killed is. The first is that the West wanted to turn Nemtsov into a martyr to destabilize Russia. Mm -hmm. okay. That uh, theory has kind of lost a little steam in the past weak. couple right. of weeks. Um, the other theory that they're mainly looking into is that Nemtsov was killed by disaffected Chechens over the Charlie Hebdo yes. uh, situation, which that doesn't really hold know, a whole lot of credibility to me either. Yeah. It goes and when in doubt. Blame the Blame Blame the but and I will say this: uh, Nimsov's daughter, Zaina Nimsov, she told CNN from Germany that she's not surprised that the men arrested for her father's murder were Chechen. She said uh, it was predictable. Right. But she also says that Putin shares in political responsibility for her father's assassination, and that she doesn't believe in the official investigation, which is okay. the Kremlin investigating. The murder, which they That's why are somewhat that. suspected in participating. Blame in. if if he did have the Chessians do it, it was, I'll bet diabolical. It was ingenious, because nobody right. looks at everybody when you when you say Muslim, uh, nobody really thinks the Muslim have a political agenda. Uh, nobody really thinks, everybody thinks that, you know, because maybe the, the way the religion is taught that Muslims are on this one crazy, oh, the Sharia, I told you. That, that, that. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's, you know, it, it's a way of life. But people belonging to Islam and they have the certain ethnicities, you can go to Clarkson and see that. Right. You know what I'm saying? That the African Muslims practice a certain way, do a certain thing, and right. they put that, uh, and, and then you get, and what do they do in there? You got Somalian Christians. Right, and Clarkson, right. you got Somali all kind of, but they all hang together under a Somalian banner, right. and their religion is just a certain thing. So it's it still would throw if you got the Chesneyans to do it, it still would throw the focus off the real political why it was done, and you can just say some radical Muslims. So right. they mad about Charlie. But that makes Charlie. it easy. It makes it easy for them to say that Muslim because the Muslims over there also have a reputation for being pretty brutal and Muslims doing a lot of killing and torture. Well, you yeah, know, you're yeah. Right. I mean, anyway, but that's why right. I say no. But nobody looks at they. They'll stop at that fact and won't look at the uh, don't, underlining. Don't that say the same thing about the African American? Yeah. Here in the United States, y'all's criminals. Yeah. Y'all need <laughs> yeah. to be locked yeah. up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. De I can't breathe. Right. Yeah, I can't breathe. Demonizing the victims. Hands up, don't shoot. <laughs> right, right. But naked down the street. Okay. Yeah. Um, we got to close out. We got we about four out. minutes. All right, y'all. We're going to do a minute each. All right. So, you want to start with you, Kevin? Sure. I think that uh, at the end of the day, I think that one thing that we need to consider is how to prevent war. I'm worried, honestly. Yes. I don't know what the time scale is going to be, but I'm worried that we'll be here a year from now and we'll be talking about serious war between NATO and Russia. And Russia, yeah. I, I, and, and I don't think it's unreasonable. And so I think now, you know, regardless of whether 
Putin was responsible for this killing or not. You know, it, and it may come out that he was responsible. It may come out that, you know, we may not be, never know who was responsible. But I think we need to think about what is smart policy? What is smart policy for the U.S.? And I think that is for Ukraine not to join NATO. And I think it's for us to really go with the diplomacy that was articulated at Minsk II, February 11th. And so I support what Angela Merkel and uh, President Hollande of France are trying to do. Spot a wolf. I'm looking at within the next six months, some fool is going to shoot down a Russian jetliner, and that's going to be the pretense for a full-fledged oh, invasion of the Ukraine. Mm. Uh, it's been done before. That's People right. keep forgetting. 1939, no, 1936, a place called the Reichstag, when Adolf Hitler right, burnt the Reichstag and blamed the Jews. Mm. History has a way of repeating <clears throat> itself, That's right. and we are not studying our history. Uh, all I have to say is, like Kevin said about facts, there are no facts that say that Putin definitely did it or can prove that he was associated with doing it. But I will also say the circumstantial evidence in the situation doesn't look good for Putin and the Kremlin. And I do feel like the U.S. and the West need to get a hold of things that's going on with Russia and Putin. Or like Kevin said, we are going to be facing a nuclear uh, war with them. And we are already, we're still dealing with Iraq and other stuff. Right. And, you know, now Iran and Russia yes, on the list, we're, we're getting stretched thin. I defer my minute. Give that uh, about that information about your movie coming on Sundance real quick. Uh, it's called uh, Red Road. It's starring uh, Lisa Bonet, uh, Jason Mumba. Just what it's on uh, April the 2nd on the Sundance. Sundance channel. We don't know the time yet, but check it out. You'll see us running around there, right? Well and Feathers looking good. All right. All right, right y'all. We're here, gonna sir. be back. Uh, we're gonna have a pre-recorded show, but we're gonna to um, have Dawn on pretty soon. So with that, mm -hmm. we out. Peace. Peace. We Peace out. from the right. arena uncensored. <laughs>